Now that was an eventful game. How many times over the past few years have you heard Manchester City being outplayed? How many times have you heard that over the past? Not much. How many times have you heard Pep Guardiola being schooled tactically? Not many times. Outcoached? Not many times. After watching that game, I genuinely feel like Pochettino had Guardiola's number. He knew how to nullify him. And most importantly, he knew how to get the beating of him offensively. Because the chances that Chelsea created on a consistent of bases warranted victory. Chelsea deserved to be in the FA Cup final. By the end of the day, you don't score goals for creating chances. You don't get rewarded for being in the right place at the right time, no. You get rewarded when you put the ball into the back of the net. It might be a beautiful goal. It might be an ugly goal. At the end of the day, the team that wins is the team that puts the ball into the back of the net. And I feel like that Pochettino performance, the way he set up the team, it had the beating of Manchester City. But what let Chelsea down, what cost Chelsea the game, is definitely not Pochettino. I think, I think it's the players. I really do. I think it's the players. The players got themselves into good areas where on another day, or if it was another team, they punished the opposition. But we'll dive into it. Make sure to subscribe if you're new and make sure to hit the like button. Now let's get the tactics out of the way before we get into the chances that were created, who cost Chelsea the game, who stood out, and most importantly, how Manchester City won the game. I feel like when you look at both teams, two very contrasting play styles. Manchester City, calm, composed. They like to retain the ball. They like to move the opposition. Ball circulation, that's what I like to call them. Ball circulation, FC. We will move the ball because we move the opposition. And once the gaps open up, because they will, we've got the players with the penetrative passing that can, that can get into the most dangerous of areas and punish the opposition. That's why when you watch Manchester City, they're very calm, they're very composed. They wait. They wait for the right moment. Chelsea, on the other hand, completely different today. Completely different. Chelsea knew. If you give Manchester City possession, over time, they will push more and more and more bodies forward. Because when it comes to ball circulation, when it comes to Manchester City, the way they like to play, the way they like to break down low blocks, they rely on overloads, whether it's down the right, down the left, in the centre, they rely on overloads. They rely on getting that numerical advantage against the opposition all over the pitch. To get that numerical advantage, sometimes you might have to sacrifice that centre half that steps forward into midfield. You might have to sacrifice that winger that tucks inside. You might have to sacrifice your number nine and ask him to drop deep and join the midfield battle. Where Pochettino got it right was he knew. Give them the ball. Allow them to push as many bodies forward as possible. They will make mistakes. They will make mistakes. A pass might be under hit. It might be over hit. A Chelsea player might be at the right place at the right time. But most importantly, the instructions were clear. Once Chelsea get the ball, play vertical. Of course, if you have to play horizontal and you have to pass the ball sideways, so be it. But if the opportunity is there to play vertical direct do it because Chelsea had the players for it Madueke stretching the pitch on the right hand side Conor Gallagher down the left but he was all over the place he would tuck in press win his defensive duels win his midfield battles but most importantly the player that I want to discuss Nicholas Jackson because as wild as it sounds in my opinion he's probably the, the player that cost Chelsea that game but you could also turn around and say it was a good performance. It was a good performance in regards to being that outlet. The only outlet on the pitch through central areas. Being the outlet. Running the channels. Dragging centre halves with you. Getting yourself into dangerous areas. Making yourself available every single time. Especially when you watched him at times. He was isolated. He was. He was isolated. The amount of times that he would receive the ball and he would have to hold it up, wait for his teammates to push higher up the field. In regards to all of those things, I think he was flawless. I think he'd done an amazing performance. But at the end of the day, 
And number nine is bread and butter. And I feel like today was the prime example of it. And number nine is bread and butter is to put the ball into the back of the net. The perfect number nines are ones that can combine both of those things. They can score you goals, but at the same time, they can run your channels. They can hold up the ball. They can connect the dots. They can drop deep and help you win some duels, make you help you win some battles. They can press from the front. They're versatile. They can interchange. All of those things are a bonus. All of those things are admired and appreciated in the modern game. But they're not as admired. They're not as appreciated as a number nine that knows where the goal is and knows how to put the ball into the back of the net. Two contrasting setups tactically. Manchester City with their typical 3 2 5. A Kanji, a Kanji slash John Stones at times stepping into midfield to partner Rodri to provide that extra layer of protection, to provide an extra player in midfield that helps him build up with five players offensively. Chelsea countered that. Manchester City, when it comes to build up, they play very narrow. Chelsea done the complete opposite. They played wide. They played wide to try and stretch Manchester City. If you stretch Manchester City, the gaps begin to open up. And that's where you can begin to find a Nicholas Jackson. That's where there is time and space for players to get on the ball. Chelsea set up in a more 2-4-4 with the two centre-halves split in. And then you've got the full-backs pushing higher up into midfield. Partnered by Caicedo and Enzo. And then you've got the four, the four offensive players. And I feel like it really did help Chelsea because once they stretched Manchester City out, there was more time and space for them to pass the ball around Manchester City. But when you look at Nicholas Jackson... You look at these opportunities. Nicholas Jackson should be converting minimum one of those. Minimum one of those. He should be putting the ball into the back of the net. Goals win you games. Goals are the number one currency in football. Nobody cares how you score them. Nobody cares who scores them. But at the end of the day, if you are, the, the, if you are Chelsea's out-and-out -out striker, your primary purpose on the pitch is to put the ball into the back of the net. And I feel like this has been the question mark over Nicholas Jackson this whole season. Is he a number nine? If he's not a number nine, what is he? How can Chelsea utilise him? Because as much as there are weaknesses to his game and flaws, there are strengths that at times this year have helped Chelsea. Even, for example, towards the end of the game. This, this is an opportunity that came from Nicholas Jackson. Dropping deep, dragging Kyle Walker with him, creating the space for Ben Chilwell down the left. But once again, poor decision making, let Chelsea down. His strengths aid Chelsea. They help Chelsea. But his weaknesses, his flaws also hold back Chelsea. So I feel it's all about finding a system or finding a role for Jackson that focuses and maximises his strengths. But at the same time, removes all deficiencies from his game, hides his deficiencies. A system that maximises his strengths, but at the same time, that hides his deficiencies. And that's why I feel he isn't an out-and-out -out number nine. He isn't an out-and-out -out number nine. And I feel when it comes to Nicholas Jackson, Chelsea, the board, his teammates, his coach, I feel like now they've gathered his strengths and his weaknesses and what we need to do next year. When it comes to Nicholas Jackson, I feel like he is a great option to play as part of a front two part of a front two where he can operate as the makeshift number 10 the center forward the striker when you play with two strikers you don't have two replicas two strikers that can do the same thing no what one striker brings to the to the table the other one will bring completely different things use nicholas jackson as the focal point the number nine that can drop deep that can drag center house with him the one that can uh drop deep into midfield and help the team with that numerical advantage, most importantly, that makeshift number 10, that centre forward, and then get another number nine that can run the channels, that can, that can get into good areas, a number nine that is more clinical. So in a sense, get a number nine that brings to the table all of Nicholas Jackson's flaws, all of his deficiencies. So find a striker that is more clinical, that is two-footed, that is more penetrative in front of goal. One that knows how to put the ball into the back of the net. 
a variety of different ways. A striker that has some X factor to him in the final third. Because those are the types of things that Nicholas Jackson lacks. Partner them with Nicholas Jackson, who can be that feeder, that provider. A player that takes the attention away. One that helps the team when it comes to build up, when it comes to progressing the ball and keep the other number nine as the out and out goal scorer. That is one way. So you play with two split strikers. The other way I feel like Chelsea should focus on is maybe if they do want to persevere with Nicholas Jackson as the main number nine, you will probably need two very high output wingers to compensate for his lack of output. Very similar to how Liverpool utilised Bobby Firmino. They had two wingers that can score you 20 plus goals. It's definitely something for Chelsea to think about because I feel like as much as he benefits the team, he does hold them back. And if Chelsea want to grow and want to get back to the Chelsea of old, Nicholas Jackson has a lot of questions that need answering. But anyways, if you're new, make sure to hit the like button, make sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on another one.